Welcome to this chapter on the concept of quality and quality definitions. As a precursor to considering quality management systems, their role, their control and their functioning, we must first define quality. This chapter will consider the concept of quality and looks at how people have tried to define it. John Ruskin, the Victorian art critic, suggested that quality is never an accident. It is always the result of intelligent effort. Quality doesn't just happen, we have to work at it. Across the Atlantic, Ralph Waldo Emerson, the 19th century American poet, essayist and philosopher, proposed that a quality product, even if only a mousetrap, was something worth seeking out. If a man should paint a better picture, preach a better sermon, or even build a better mousetrap, then even though he builds his house in the middle of a forest, people will make a path to his door. People will make a path to your door. And that is what an aspect of quality is about, perhaps, getting people to make a path to your corporate door. Ask any group of people what quality is and what it is about, and you'll get a myriad of answers. Quality is undoubtedly a movable feast, and what is quality for one person is not necessarily quality to another. Generally though, such answers will centre on well-rehearsed clichés, such as meeting specification, or the right product at the right time and at the right price. Getting it right first time every time, and making goods which do not come back for customers who do, would also suffice in any discussion. We may even have definitions of quality thrown in, Dr Duran's fitness for purpose and Philip Crosby's conformance to requirements. The important thing to note is that quality thinking has evolved over time. Principles associated with business needs, environmental needs, design and development needs, customer needs, both internal and external, stakeholder needs, and the operational needs of effectiveness and efficiency have all been embraced into contemporary quality thought. This evolution in quality thinking is perhaps best seen through the changes evident in quality related definitions. Both Duran and Crosby crystallised their thought processes through their definitions in the 1970s, the focus being very much on product quality. The product will be fit for purpose. The product will conform to requirements. In the 1980s, W.E. Deming, our management guru, introduced a temporal aspect to our quality thinking, suggesting that we should be concerned about fitness for purpose not only today, but also in thinking about the future and future customer needs. Quality should be aimed at the needs of the consumer, present and future. Armand Fiegenbraun, the total quality control expert, suggested a more embracing view of quality. He said that quality was the total composite product and service characteristics of marketing, engineering, manufacture and maintenance through which the product and service in use will meet the expectations of the customer. In including elements such as marketing, engineering and maintenance, he was suggesting that we should not only consider the product quality, but also as elements that may impact on the achievement of product quality, such as marketing in promising the earth but not delivering, and engineering and maintenance with downtimes and equipment malfunctions. ISO, the International Standards Organization, in ISO 9000-2005 Fundamentals and Vocabulary, defines quality as the degree to which a set of characteristics fulfills requirements. Whilst at first ephemeral, the definition allows scope for us to embrace a whole set of characteristics, such as achievement of product specification, delivery on time and in full, achievement in an effective and efficient manner and a range of requirements such as those of both internal and external customers, shareholders, society, employees and regulatory bodies. As with Fegan Brown, a more embracing view of quality. 
Driving this thought process forward have been saleability models that, whilst maintaining the preeminence of product quality, also highlight the importance of delivery and cost as quality considerations. Whilst delivery and cost are important factors when choosing something, it is normally quality that has the sustained impact. Other quality models have suggested that attention now needs to be paid to all quality parameters, not only conformance to specification, but also the quality of design and the quality of use. That is the actual cost of ownership. In other words, you can have a great product, but it's no good if it breaks down shortly after use. Additionally, attention now needs to be paid to all quality dimensions, not only product quality, but also business quality, including our environmental and, eth and ethical stance, and organisational quality, including our effective and efficient operation. Such thinking has prompted us to view quality as a much more embracing concept and not something solely concerned with product conformance. And so, in this introductory chapter, we can see that quality is an evolving notion. It has evolved and continues to evolve. It has become a more embracing entity, more holistic, as it embraces not just product quality, but also those elements, factors that can impact on quality. The development in thought process has been evident over time in the various attempts made to define quality and is seen through the evolution of definitions. Whilst many systems and indeed many standards continue to focus on product conformance and this element is core to quality, contemporary quality thinking suggests that this is not enough. Attention now needs to be paid to all quality parameters and all quality dimensions. We ignore their potential impact on product conformance at our peril. We can be effective and be making product that wholly conforms one week and if this is not achieved efficiently, be out of business the next week. And in line with this evolution in quality thinking, our thoughts regarding the constitution, role and workings of a quality management system have also evolved. And we will look at this evolution in the next chapter.